sorry for the strange angle. I am sitting hard at work and I don't want people to judge me. So you're a little bit lower than you might be if I were using my phone stand on my dashboard. So uh, this is gonna be the beginning of a reading vlog. I always look over here and you're, you're down here. So this is gonna be the beginning of a reading vlog. I am trying to work my way through Empire of the Vampire, which I want to say I'm like somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 pages through that one. And I'm listening to Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. So I'm trying to work my way through those. And my hope is, because it's Monday now, I just got back to work. This past weekend, I was doing a pre-practicum virtual experience thing for school. And it was just, it was fine. I mean, I was good. I needed to do it. But like, it really sucked that it was Thursday, Friday. So I take those two days off work and then Saturday, Sunday. So I didn't have really any time to relax or do anything for me. Last night, my husband and I read some, um, which was nice, but I don't know. I'm just really tired today because I really didn't get like my weekend. So anyway, it's Monday. The goal is I would love, I don't know if it'll happen, but I would love to finish Empire of the Vampire before the end of the week. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll go down like that but that's what I would like to do and to pretty diligently be listening to uh, Under the Whispering Door as well. Under the Whispering Door is not long. If I listen to the audiobook on one and a half times speed at least I should get through it relatively easily and quickly. Um, so I'll let you know how I'm feeling about those things. I'm going to try to update you with my feelings um, periodically but I can kind of start. When it comes to Empire of the Vampire I am thoroughly enjoying this. It is different to me than any other vampire book I've ever read, especially in terms of how vampires are made, um, or how they, I guess, come to be, because you have the, like, highborn vampires that are your stereotypical vampire that's beautiful and, um, alluring and all of that stuff, and then you have your, I don't even remember the word that's used for them but they're basically like almost zombie-like vampires like they're just really animalistic feral kind of creatures and they're mostly like in a different stage of decomposition the only thing that I can really grasp is that after a vampire bites you kills you does whatever and it's when you awaken into your new vampire state that determines what you're going to look like um so if you awaken immediately, then you're probably going to be one of those like highborn, high blood, beautiful vampires. If you fester on the ground for 10 days, then you're going to be kind of like a decayed, disgusting thing. I don't know. So it's very interesting so far. And there are different bloodlines in the vampires, which is really cool. It's just a different way that um, I've ever seen it done. And, you know, Kristoff's general tone is very similar in some ways to that of Nevernight. And I really enjoyed the Nevernight trilogy. I know some people had issues with it. So this one, I just feel like he, this is probably his best work. I'm not that far. I'm probably like a third of the way through it, but it's to me, I feel like it is his best work. And I'm very excited to see where the story goes. I know it's supposed to be a series. There's a lot of characters that I really like, which is scary because I know how Kristoff is. Um, I don't trust that any of them will still be alive by the end of it. So I'm just kind of bracing myself for that as I progress through. But yeah, it is my in-person book club's book for the month of October. And I definitely will be finishing it for that reason. But I have a lot of other things. If you saw my last video, my autumnal fall TBR, the books weren't necessarily fall themed, but they were just books that like all came out, oops, sorry, all came out for the most part in September that I really wanted to finish soon so that I could have like timely opinions about them. So hopefully I'll be able to get through more of those this month if I'm able to finish Empire of the Vampire like soon. And then Under the Whispering Door, so far I'm getting similar vibes to House of the Cerulean Sea. Like I noticed that Clune makes his unlikable characters almost laughably unlikable, like very exaggerated negative qualities to them. 
Um, he's obviously like trying to deliver a message and it was very clear in House in the Stroll Nancy, which is fine. I don't mind that. And I suspected that was the way this one would be before I started it, but it's just, <laughs> it would bother some people. I think it doesn't bother me, but it's very much like, Hey, Hey, this guy's an asshole. Hey, he's an asshole, but he's going to change by the end of this. So, you know, which is fine, but a lot of people don't like to be beat over the head with it. And I think that some people may feel a little beat over the head with it, but I'm going to reserve as much judgment, as much judgment as I can, because I loved House in the Shrewly and Sea. This one so far has really great ratings. So, and it's one of my most anticipated books of the year. It was a five-star prediction. Same with Empire of the Vampire. So I'm really, really hoping that both of these live up to my expectations. I wouldn't be disappointed too much if it was a four-star, but I would be if it was anything less than that. So we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I will update you guys. Um, I'm not sure what else is going to be happening this week. I need to work in my planner. I need to clean the house. I need to get my homework done. Oh, and also I want to write. I've had like the nagging, incessant sensation to write. And I'm really interested in kind of like a dark academia, magical realism, portal fantasy situation is where my brain is right now. I have no idea what's going to happen in this vlog at all, so I wish I could give you more insight, but as of right now, those two books are my reading goals for the week. If anything else happens to get read, then that'll be good, and yeah, so hang around. Hopefully not a lot of this is done in my car, but it might be just because I have, you know, an hour lunch, so I'll be able to chat about books during lunch. Um, otherwise, I will see y'all later. This is sitting in a stink warm. I will build the pie in the pie pan with the crusts that are store bought because I'm lazy. Let us get the pies together. So I'm using Pillsbury pie crusts. Let them out at room temperature. I might have them in the microwave for like five or ten seconds because if they're not room temperature enough, they will um, break and like rip, which fucking blows so let me clean up my mess here and then I'll set you up and you can watch me do that process too.
Hi friends, sorry for the poor lighting. It is 10.30 at night. If you can hear another voice, my husband is playing a game on his PC and is chatting with his friends. So um, I just wanted to come on here and give you an update of where I am with my reading. I believe I'm about 20 some percent through Under the Whispering Door and I've got some guesses about how the end of that is going to be based upon the story so far. I'll be surprised if one of the guesses isn't the one because, I mean, T.J. Klune's books, they have a very particular message that they're trying to get across and they are straight into the point. There's nothing that's really like, I don't think supposed to be like a mystery. Um, so... We'll see what happens. I could be surprised. I could not see the end coming. My husband did finish it and he is like hung up on it because he feels like it's very similar to House in the Cerulean Sea. I have no idea. I'm not there. Um, I think it is very different. At least in the, I guess the message that he's looking at and the themes and whatnot that he's examining in this one are different than the other one. But it feels in some ways similar I don't know yet I'm only like 20 some percent like I said so still got a ways to go um tonight though I have read an additional 90 some pages I think of Empire of the Vampire this edition is the UK edition I don't have the cover on it right now but um I'm about halfway so and as for this book I'm stressed. Uh, Jake Ristoff is going to need to be paying for my mental health bills after this because I have developed like fucking anxiety from reading this book. Who am I kidding? I already had anxiety, but it's made worse by this book. And I have a hard time getting attached to any of the characters because I know how Kristoff is. Sherlock. Sherlock. I don't know if you can see him, but I have a cat over here being a giant asshole. Look at this. This right here is his dumb head. So, you'll be hearing him in the background fucking with shit. Anyway, um, I'm definitely not wanting to get attached to anybody because I know Kristoff likes to kill off his characters. So, I'm just like hesitantly hopeful that some of them will survive to the end of this thing. I have no idea. Um, there's been lots of death, lots of blood, lots of traveling. There's a lot of traveling in this midpoint. They're going places trying to um, solve the mystery of Day's death, which you learn pretty much at the beginning. Um, this world is cloaked in darkness, where in Evernight there was no nighttime. In this book, there's no daytime. Which I think is kind of interesting that he chose to write his next series like that. <sighs> I'm sorry, my cat is knocking stuff off the table. That's driving me nuts. Sherlock. No. Stop. Come here. Come here. So, um... It's just very interesting. Just overall, I feel like the premise of this is pretty interesting. Um, I'm engaged. I'm just stressed. And we have multiple bad guys in this. We have all the vampires, obviously. Um, we have the wretched, which are the zombie-like vampires. And then we have the highborn, high-blood, whatever, vampires that are super powerful. There are four houses of vampire bloodlines, and they all have special powers. And the, without that being, you know, enough of a fucking problem, we also have hints of, you know, political things that could come up in the future as being an issue. People, you know, you think you can trust that you can't because they're politicians. Um, and then you also have the, essentially the Inquisition, um, 
and I don't really understand their purpose other than to just wreak havoc right now. I understand that, like, Kristoff is trying to increase the stakes for his characters and giving them a lot of avenues of potential unliving. But, um, I think that the Inquisition is, like, a bit much because they just, like, torture people. Um, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes how big of a pain in the ass they're going to be where i'm at right now they have proven to be a pain in the ass um so we'll see what the characters find out and what they are able to accomplish despite these obstacles that they're encountering um gabriel de leon the main character i do enjoy him um i enjoy his banter with the other characters because he is a surly asshole and he just, I don't know, I just really enjoy him. Um, there is a relationship thing, and without giving too much information away, that has, to me, an inappropriate age. Um, one person, and it's not who you would necessarily expect, is an adult, and the other person is a child still, underage, um, at least by you know, American standards, underage, and it's just, like, super inappropriate to me. It is addressed. Gabriel, the main character, is like, that's kind of fucked up. Like, it's not just, like, fine or anything, but I do kind of take issue with it, and I'm hoping that... Sherlock, get down! Fucking look at this guy. He's up there. Why? Why have I been cursed with these animals? Bro. <laughs> Let me go get him before he fucks my shit up. Anyway, I don't really remember what I was saying. Oh, the relationship that I think is inappropriate. It is addressed. And I'm just wondering what the point is. Because if there's no point, if there's no greater reason why he included this other than for, like, shock factor, I feel like it could have been completely left out. Um, or the characters could have been closer in age. They're not, like, wildly, vastly different in age, but it's enough, and I don't like it. <laughs> so, we'll see what happens. There's always some of these taboo topics that appear in Kristoff's work. He's a problematic fave, and I know that. I definitely know that he writes some shit that I'm just like, come on, man, like, do better. But I can't help but really enjoy every other aspect of his books that isn't that. But hopefully he's learned from past mistakes, and this relationship that's in here will be ended appropriately and the topic addressed again. It was addressed, I thought, decently when it was brought up the first time. But I just hope that something happens to where it ends and they go their separate ways. Preferably not somebody dying because that would be cheap. But then realizing, like, this is fucking inappropriate. So, not gonna hold my breath, but it would be nice. Also, went to Barnes & Noble and just traipsed all around the store. I was looking for Save the Cat Writes a Novel, I think is what it's called. The original Save the Cat is a screenwriting book. I was looking for the one about novels because I've had the urge to write. Didn't find it, but I did find this, Neon Gods by Katie Robert, which I'm fairly certain is a Hades and Persephone retelling. I've heard quite a lot about it. Um, I actually had looked for it last time I was at Barnes & Noble and they didn't have it there. So I was surprised to see it. And when I saw it, I was like, yoink, you're coming home with me. So that's pretty cool. Definitely not mad about it. Um, not sure when I'll get to it, but I couldn't find the book I wanted. So I went ahead and bought that one because I have no self-control. So yeah, but it's getting pretty late. I think I'm gonna go to bed. Tomorrow is, what is tomorrow? Eh. Tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow is Wednesday, it's after midnight. 
which means I've been up way too fucking long. So, um, hi Sherlock. So I'm gonna go to sleep and then in the morning, I'm going to maybe go get a coffee from Starbucks, God willing, and then go to work and try to listen to as much of Under the Whispering Door as I can. And then I'll update you about that one. I hope to get maybe another 50 pages read of Empire of the Vampire tomorrow. I don't know if I'll get the Empire of the Vampire done by the end of this week. It's big and long and I'm only halfway through. So unless I do nothing else, and your girl can't do nothing else because I have a genogram that is due for school on Sunday. And I don't know if any of you have ever done a genogram, but it is for my couples and family class for my clinical mental health counseling part of my degree. And I need to do the genogram just to kind of get an idea of what those are like for clients. So that is the homework assignment that I need to do. So we'll see. Um, this video, I've edited quite a lot of it already. It's already half an hour long. I would like it to be no longer than an hour. So we'll see if I can keep it within those parameters. I'd love 45 minutes, but I talk too much. So I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm going to go because I need to go to bed. Good morning, beautiful people. It is, what day is it? Wednesday morning. Um, I'm going to like mention last night that I wanted to get a Starbucks beverage, but the Starbucks near me, I don't know if you guys are experiencing this. The Starbucks near me is like totally sold out of everything all the time. They had the white mocha sauce to make my white mocha, which is what I always get, but they are out of all the food stuff. So like I usually will get a cheese Danish and I'll get the bacon and cheese little egg bite things. And they've been out of those things for like several days now, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but I didn't see much point in going up to Starbucks if I couldn't get what I usually get. So I'm at McDonald's. I know it's a huge step down. But their pumpkin spice latte isn't bad, so I'm gonna get that. And I get some of their breakfast burritos and hash brown and a cake. So that'll be my morning. I really would like to stop eating breakfast at McDonald's, but it's convenient and easy, and I struggle with eating breakfast in the morning and making breakfast, I should say. I'll eat it, but I struggle with waking up to make it. I don't know if anybody else is that way, but I am not a morning person whatsoever. I get up the last possible second that I can get up to do everything. Work, I shower at night. So, yeah, all that. <sighs> it is 8 o'clock in the morning. I gotta be at work at 8 30, so I've got this line on and straight to work. Um, I'm gonna listen to Under the Spring Door.
friends. Um, ignore my ugly crying face, but I just finished the Tea Dragon Tapestry. I was not expecting to pick this one up this week, but it was kind of a mood read selection from my fall TBR. And I'm really glad that I did because it's just one of those stories that's like a warm hug and it's so soft and sweet. And this particular one, I was correct in my thoughts that it does deal with grief. Not just grief of the loss of a loved one, but also feeling like you've lost yourself. And I don't feel like those are really spoilers. It doesn't give anything away about which characters are feeling that or, you know, the specifics of it. But it is probably the one that impacted me the most of the three. I think, I mean, to be truthful, I think I cried during each one because the... Topics that are chosen just are so poignant and you can feel the emotion and the tone and the mood and everything is set to instill that feeling in you. And I just really felt a huge connection to this one because grief has been a constant companion of mine for most of my life. And the way that it's handled in this book, I just feel like it is done so, so well. So if you have not picked these up, please do. They are so good. I can talk a little bit more about these during my wrap up for the fall TBR. Um, but until then, please consider reading them. They're definitely worth it. They are a little pricey. This particular one is a $22 book and it's not, you know, big really. But if you can get them from the library or, you know, maybe you can get them like secondhand somewhere, it would be definitely worth it. I mean, I think they're worth every penny, but I know that not everyone is able to spend that much on essentially a picture book or graphic novel um but I don't think you'd be disappointed if you did so but I'm gonna let you go and uh see you in my next update hopefully I'll have made more progress in the other two books that I'm currently currently reading we'll see hello everyone um it's been a few days I updated last about the Tea Dragon Tapestry on Wednesday, um, and I've just been busy since then. Thursday and Friday, on the way to work, I listened, well, pretty much any time I was in the car, I listened to the audiobook of Under the Whispering Door, and I want to say that I am somewhere in the neighborhood of 60-something percent of the way through that one. It's very good some shit has gone down that's very frustrating and I'm not sure um it's like right in the throes of it and I had, like had to stop it because I had to get out of the car and go do whatever I was doing so I'm very curious how that issue resolves but I'm really enjoying the book so far and I'm thinking that it's definitely going to be a five star um it is triggering um so there is an author's note at the beginning of the book that talks about um, references to suicide and death at different stages of life um, and grieving and just all of that. So if you're sensitive to those kinds of topics, you may want to just proceed with caution um, and take any breaks. I, I wouldn't tell you not to read it because I do think the book is important, but it could be triggering for you. So just give yourself a break. And if you don't feel like you can read it, obviously don't. But um, I've been through some really horribly traumatic things regarding death. I'm glad I'm reading it. It did make me cry a couple times. And I know my story is not everyone else's. And me being able to read it doesn't mean somebody else can, but um, I'm glad I'm reading it, if that makes a difference. As for Empire of the Vampire, I had not had a chance to read that until today, um, this evening. I had, so Thursday and Friday, I was doing homework, I was working, I um, had done a night of self-care, I showered, shaved, did my nails, you know, that sort of thing. Been spending a lot of time with my family, so I have not read as much as I typically would. Um, today is Saturday, and 
I haven't updated since Wednesday, so it tells you how busy I've been. But um, did a lot of cleaning around the house today. We moved into the house the first weekend of August, and it is now the first week of October. And the garage is still full of stuff from the move that we have not brought in and put where it's supposed to go. So we spent some time doing that today and she's been away at it. And it's definitely better than it was, but tomorrow is going to be another day of that because your girl's tired of the way things look out there. Um, but I am on page, let's see, 502 of Empire of the Vampire and shit is about to go off. Um, I'm just so, ugh, I have no idea where it's going to go. I have no idea what's going to happen. Like I know you kind of know the end of the, the particular situation because of how the story is told because it's an interview. So everything that's happened has already happened in the past and there's allusions to it in the uh, beginning of the book. So I know what's going to happen. I just don't know how it's going to happen. And that's the part that scares me. I don't know who's going to die in the process. So, yeah. That is the current situation that I am dealing with. But it's very good. I don't know that I'll be able to finish it tomorrow. I know I had grandiose plans of finishing both of these books before the week was out. But I just, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Oh, but I, feel, I feel close enough to, truly. Like, there's, I'm at... That's 200 pages. Let's see. So, 220-ish pages, I guess. Um, and I could do that. I really could. I'm wondering if I can read a little bit more tonight. Because it's only, what time is it? 10.44. My child wakes up early. I don't know. <laughs> I'll try to read some more tonight, and then I'll try to read... The rest of it tomorrow night and then update you. I want to finish at least one of the two between Empire of the Vampire and Under the Whispering Door for this video because that was my goal. Um, if nothing else I did finish the Tea Dragon Tapestry so at least I finished something but also happy October the best month of the year. My child will be a year old at the end of the month and I am not okay. So any mamas out there I'm sure you know that first year goes by fast. And I think every year after it is probably going to go by fast too. I don't know which cat that is. Hmm? Anyway, sorry cats. Um, I am going to uh, probably continue Empire of the Vampire. I was just looking at this one wondering if I wanted to read it text. I've been listening to the audiobook. I just don't know if I want to read it in this format because it's right here. Because I, I'm one of those people I can't listen to an audiobook if I'm not like driving or doing something with my hands. I think I would zone out if I tried to listen to it while I was just like laying on the couch. So I'm debating whether I want to try to read some more of this this way or if I want to do Empire of the Vampire. I'm not sure. I would love some fries from McDonald's though because I'm a fatty. Ugh, okay. Anyway, I'll check in with you cats at a later time. Probably tomorrow. Hey friends, today's Sunday, the 3rd of October. I think I checked in with you guys last night about Empire of the Vampire. I read a little bit more, maybe like 20 or so pages more. Um, got to book six this morning. I read a little bit more. Got to book six this morning. So I'm really close to the end. I believe I've got less than 200 pages, probably like 170 pages maybe left to finish that. And then I'm out and about. I have some errands I need to run. I have some returns I have to make and I need to get gas. And I probably need to stop into the grocery store and pick up some things. Um, but that is my agenda for today is to do these errands and then go home and try to sneak in as much reading as possible while Teddy is up and about. He's napping right now, but I'm sure by the time I get back, he'll be awake. Um, but 
that's my main goal is to finish Empire of the Vampire tonight, and I'm fairly certain that I can. I am going to listen to Under the Whispering Door while I run my errands, so I'll hopefully make another dent in that. And I hope to finish that tomorrow or the next day, but that will probably have to be on a separate vlog um, because this one's already really, really, really long. Like, I'm sure I have almost two hours worth of stuff that I need to trim down. Um, so, yeah. I will check back in with you later this afternoon. Hopefully by that time I will be done with Empire of the Vampire. And I will give you my thoughts. I think I know where things are going to go, at least for this book. But um, I could be wrong. I just know that I'm going to be heartbroken at the end of it, probably. So, we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to go. Um, I got too much shit to do to chat long. So, love you all. I will check back in with you later. Bye. Hi, friends. Pardon the not cute angle. It's Monday. Um, I told you that I had hoped to finish one or the other of Empire of the Vampire or Under the Whispering Door by last night. I ended up finishing both of them. And if you've read one or the other, you would know that I'm feeling exceptionally emotionally abused right now. Um, they were both five-star reads for me. I'll obviously go into some more details during the wrap-up at the end of the month, but I certainly enjoyed my time, even though it was painful as fuck. Um, I actually have a headache right now. Um, I ended up taking the day off of work because I just have felt like crap all night, and I felt like crap all day, so I'm hoping that Teddy will sleep so that we can sleep because not only was I not feeling well last night, he was up and down all night. So it's just what it is. It's not COVID or anything because we don't go anywhere, but <clears throat> it's just annoying. This is Sherlock. He is my bed buddy. But yes, my husband and I buddy read Empire of the Vampire. This is the one that he read. I read the UK edition and it was just a good time. Like I knew it was going to fucking hurt the whole time. I knew that the end was just going to be like, Oh God. But overall I was, it's definitely Kristoff's best work for sure. Um, <clears throat> and then I read the majority of under the whispering door via audiobook, but I ended up finishing it via the hardback because I just had it nearby. Um, I didn't feel like finding my headphones to listen to it while I was in the house. So yeah, that was my evening last night. Truthfully, I'm in a bit of a reading hangover, book hangover, I guess. So, and then just not feeling well isn't like the most helpful thing. So I don't really have anything else to say. I don't feel like that was very coherent because my brain is like trying to escape out of my eyeballs. Thank you, Cheryl. So, I think the thing to do is to lay down for a bit. Try to put my baby down for a nap, but I hear him in there, him hauling around in his crib. So, who knows if he's actually going to sleep or not. Um, so, yeah. Tonight, I might start some new things, but that's not going to be on this vlog, so this is the end. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope it's not too fucking long, but if it is, you just got to spend extra time with me. So, anyway, I'll chat at you later. Have a great week. Bye.